So you can't shoot these drones down themselves, but Raytheon in conjunction with the UK just released this video. Look at that fire on the drone. This is a directed energy laser, and then it just bites the dust like Mike Tyson just dropped it. You know, Mike Tyson from decades ago, not 60 year old Mike Tyson. <laughs> Let's watch that one more time. So this directed energy laser gun, you can see it start burning a hole through the right side of the drone and then the drone just tumbles. So again, there are options to take down drones and that's the number one thing I want you to get from this video. We're gonna go through the different anti-drone technologies that are likely to be used. Not on these drones necessarily, but on drones in the future. So we'll talk about those. But ultimately the fact that you're concerned out there, I totally get it. And if you've been on the Max Afterburner channel before, welcome back. If you're new here, my name's Ryan. I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot. And today we're gonna be breaking down what's been going on in New Jersey with the drone sightings and then all around the country. There's been some drone sightings in California recently as well. But the ones in New Jersey specifically, I wanna hone in on those. Those have been flying near military bases. So definitely strange happenings when it comes to that. They're also said that some of them are the size of cars. So we're going to get into that. I want to start with the counter drone technology and what could be used against these things. And again, you got to follow the rules. So it's got to be in conjunction with local law enforcement, FBI, military, FAA. They've all got to be in on it to make this happen. And again, you saw that drone tumble. So you got to make sure the drop zone where these things are going down are completely clear of inhabitants to keep everybody safe. So with that said, let's dive into anti-drone technology. What could be used to deny these things? from encroaching into the U.S.'s airspace. And again, it's kind of like you have mice in the house. So I understand why everybody is concerned and everybody wants answers. When you have mice in the house, you're kind of on edge. You're like, where are these things? Where are they coming from? And you got to get rid of them. So that's what we should be thinking. And we should get answers quickly. So hopefully this is something that makes everybody better. It makes all these agencies work together better so that if it happens again, we have answers fast, lickety split. Let's dive into this anti-drone tech. So the first thing that you're going to be working with to get these drones on a screen is going to be a radar to know where they're at. The issue is though, they're really small. So it's going to take very sensitive types of radars, drone specific radars to spot them. But if you have those, then it's going to be pretty easy to lock on and follow these things, but they're hard to come by. The ATC radars, air traffic control radars that are operating out there, likely not spotting these tiny drones. But if they're the size of cars, then you have the opportunity to spot them because that's close to the size of a Cessna and these radars have no problem picking these things up. But when they get much smaller than that, you're going to have to get some different detection technology. And that's going to be radio frequency analyzers. So there's technology out there that can actually analyze the signal going from the controller, the place where the drone is being run from to the drone itself. So you can hone in on that frequency to find where the drone's at. And then you can just follow and track the end of that to know where the drone's at at all times. Next, optical sensors are going to be huge as well. So when I flew the Strike Eagle, we had a huge optical sensor on our jet. It used optics and it also used IR frequencies to detect different objects. So those are going to be really good on clear days. But when you get into fog, clouds, things like that, then it's obviously going to detract from those optical sensors. But what you can do with those optical sensors is when you get up close, you can really hone in and get details about that exact object. So that would be a definite benefit when trying to find out exactly what types of drones these are. And then acoustic sensors can help you detect drones as well. So extremely high powered microphones can help you zero in and and sometimes triangulate the location of drones. You hear that little waspy sound, that is gonna cue you right in if you're using an acoustic sensor. Now there are stealth drones, but the drones that have been spotted in the vicinity of New Jersey are not the stealth type. So the acoustic sensors combined with some of the other things we've talked about can really help you narrow in and find these drones. One of the top anti-drone technologies we're gonna talk about are radio frequency jammers. So you can literally hone in on the drone itself and make it go lost link. And as soon as you do that, you can hone in very, very precisely and as soon as you do that, it's going to start to go into a lost link mode, whatever that is. It could be a return home mode. It could be, I'm going to sit here and hover until I run out of juice and then I'm going to land slowly. But ultimately, those radio jammers are going to be very powerful in situations like this. You can actually take these things down and do it in a way that's safe where you're not having to burn them out of the sky necessarily. That's an option, but you don't have to do that. This could be a good way to start. Get that radio frequency jammer out there. It could be a handheld jammer. It could be mounted on a vehicle. It could be mounted on another drone. Get it out there and get it working 
and get these drones down. That's probably gonna be my go-to if I was in charge of this task force. GPS spoofers can also be used if the drone's using GPS to triangulate its position. Now this could be troublesome because these drones are operating near commercial aircraft. So it's kind of hard to hone in that GPS jamming. So if they're jamming an entire area, now you've got aircraft that are being jammed as well and that's not something you want. So you might opt for something a little more direct. High powered microwave devices basically emit an EMP, an electromagnetic pulse. They can take down an electronic device, but again, they're gonna take out electronic devices in the area as well. So think of possibly using something like this out over a vastly unpopulated area, like an ocean or something like that. Likely not gonna be used in this situation. Nets and net guns are interesting because you can actually mount these to drones and drones can actually fire these things while on the move. And then there are parachutes that are attached. You could fire one of these drones. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. You can fire it at one of these drones, get a net around it and then have it drop slowly to the earth so we can collect these things and figure out where they're coming from. And then at the end of the day, if those don't work, you got that high energy laser that we looked at at the beginning and that technology exists. I mean, if you look at things like the Iron Dome, the Iron Dome uses lasers and rockets to intercept incoming drones or rockets. And next we got high energy lasers like we saw at the beginning of the video. Those are an option that's bringing out the big guns because that is gonna bring that drone down. Again, you gotta be very careful of the drop zone, but that is an option. And hey, sometimes at the end of the day, all you have left is bring out the big guns and that is what these high energy lasers do. And then lastly, you've got cyber takeover technology. So there's actually technology out there that allows you to hack into the stream that's going to the drone and become the controller of that drone. This is just next level shit. Okay, so now that we've hit on the counter drone technology, what could be used to take these things down? Let's talk about likely what these things are. So these drones could be being flown by hobbyists because they actually have approved FAA lighting. So when it comes to approved FAA lighting, what you're gonna have is a green light on the right side of the aircraft, a red light on the left-hand side. And that is what these drones, a lot of them have been shown to have. And the fact that their lights are even on just shows that, yeah, this could be hobbyists or someone else that wants us to see them. Otherwise they would just turn the lights off or remove the lights. So this shows that, yeah, hobbyists could be up there pranking people essentially. Unfortunately, there's this mindset out there of doing stupid things like this. Like there's people out there that lays aircraft from the ground into the cockpit, which is completely illegal and there's federal crimes for doing it, but ultimately people still do it and they're stupid. So there could be people out there that are doing that. It could be a few different people. It could be one person with a swarm of these things for all we know. And if they're jailbroken, that means they can get higher than the roughly 400 foot limit that's imposed on drones in the United States. So if they jailbroke these things and they're out there flying them around, that's obviously illegal as well. The second option would be a foreign adversary. But again, why would a foreign adversary have FAA approved lighting on these things? Well, interestingly enough, Recently, a foreign Chinese national has been arrested for flying a drone around Vandenberg Space Force Base. And he did it, I think it was the day after a SpaceX rocket was launched with a spy satellite on board. So this is obviously highly classified information. Now, this drone took pictures and huge swaths of Vandenberg Air Force Base, and it operated at an altitude of nearly 5,000 feet. So you're close to almost a mile in height. And these drones are only supposed to fly around 400 feet. So it turns out that this Chinese national National actually jailbroke this drone and was able to get it up to altitude. So while not a foreign adversary necessarily, like a direct sponsorship from that, you can bet the Chinese Communist Party is wanting to get their hands on those images. And maybe they did get their hands on them before the FBI was able to get them back. The FBI did handle the situation and they're prosecuting this in court. But ultimately, this person's not a foreign adversary. But do you see what I'm saying? That there could be the chance that the foreign adversary are using Chinese citizens that are here on a work visa or an academic scholarship or whatever the case may be to collect sensitive information around our military bases. The reason I say that is because these drones have been spotted around very sensitive military bases like US Army Picatinny Arsenal, which is a development center for highly classified weapons. They store the weapons there, they develop them there. Also Langley Air Force Base, multiple drones have been spotted over that base over the last month and that it houses the F-22 and the sensitive technology that goes along with that. So the fact that these drones are going over those areas, you know, maybe it's a numbers thing, could be a foreign an adversary saying, hey, yeah, we know we're buying these drones in the US. We're operating them there with foreign nationals, but we're not gonna technically have ownership of that because we're gonna have plausible deniability. So that could definitely be the case as well. The next case, and I know this is a little woo-woo, could be a little out there, but you guys deserve for me to just speak things that could be happening, and that is a PSYOP. So is this a PSYOP that could be taking place? Well, when a PSYOP happens, you have to ask yourself a few different questions. So what's the timing of this? So is the timing of this actually covering up something else in the news? Possibly. I mean, that's a 
up for you to decide. Or is this event happening gonna create new rules, new regulations, new laws? Could this be something where a business gets an outsized chunk of pie because they're developing some special type of technology to take down drones? That's for you to decide, that's for you to look into. But ultimately, those are the three different options that I see possibly happening. Could be a combination of all three. And ultimately, I just respect the fact that you deserve answers. I think it's great that the people are out there asking for them. That's what we should be doing. All right, so you made it to the end of the video. So a few stories that I'll tell you. The first one's pretty quick. So in an F-16 fighter jet operating at low altitude, I flew past a drone. I was probably going about 500 miles an hour. I, it was a bigger drone, probably the size of like a go-kart. Uh, and it had four different blades on top, definitely unmanned. But I flew past that over a large urban area and it just shocked me that that thing could be up where I was. I was probably about five to 600 feet. So it was just above the area where drones should operate, but that can happen. So maybe this event happening in New Jersey will tighten down things like that and keep things like that from happening. That'd be great. Okay, the next story I'll tell you was the UAP story I told you at the beginning. So I was up at altitude recently in a jet and it was about 36,000 feet in the Western United States. And I saw coming towards me basically a flat object that had a pass through for air in the middle. It was bright white around the outside edges and then kind of cream colored in the middle. And it looked like a hole through the middle where air was passing through, I assume. But it was just flat plated. It wasn't aerodynamic. And that's what really stood out to me. So it made me think it was like a weather balloon, but I didn't see any tether. The other pilot I was flying with didn't see a tether as well. So ultimately that thing going like this was definitely shocking. So there's a lot of things out there that we don't know about. Ultimately, I think it's good that we talk about them, that we get information about them as quick as we can, and that we try to protect ourselves because ultimately you gotta protect yourself psychologically, right? All this in the news about the New Jersey drones, it's a lot and it might be impacting you in a lot of different ways. So ultimately resilience is key right now. So double down, community, exercise, whatever it is that you do to keep your resilience high, psychological resilience during times like this is incredibly crucial. It's important all the time, but especially at times like this. So thanks so much for those of you that commented on previous videos that you wanted to see this subject. It's been really fun to research and talk about. And ultimately, again, I hope this is just something that we can hone in and narrow down and get this process better. So in case something really nefarious happens, all of these government agencies, all these local law enforcement personnel, they're all on the same page and they're able to give us answers within hours. Thanks so much for watching guys. Oh, by the way, this is crazy, but only 20% of the people that watch my videos with millions of views are subscribed. So if you would subscribe, it would help me grow the channel tremendously and I would greatly appreciate it. And if you'd share the channel with family and friends and help me grow there as well, I would appreciate that very much. Other videos will pop up over here. So check one of those out. It would mean a lot to me if you'd watch those. Thanks for watching again, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Have a great day. Oh, 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 oh